So let's get started with this. Storing components and variables. What the heck do we mean and why would you want to do that? Let's take a look. If you're programming in App Inventor, you already know that you can store just about anything in a variable, numbers, strings, and whatnot. You also have lists. But what you maybe didn't realize is it's also possible to store a user interface control in a variable. To illustrate, here's a just a simple special button variable. Let's just named it special button. We assigned it the value zero. Um, down in our code, we actually though say set global special button to button one. Well, that's pretty strange, isn't it? Button one is the name of one of our controls. We can actually do this with other controls as well. I could have set special button to checkbox one or set special button to list picker one. As far as I can tell, just about every control could be assigned to a variable. Where do we find the reference to button one, button two, or for that matter, any other user interface component? Where they're located is actually at the bottom of the properties, events, and whatnot that you find when you click on the control in the blocks list in the block editor. So we're going over here to button one, click on that there, and we have our various event handlers and then things that we can change in the properties. All the way down at the bottom here is where we have button one. And in fact, each of the various items that we might have in our user interface um, will generally have a reference that you can fetch from that location. To demonstrate the use of assigning a component to a variable, we're going to create a very simple program. It's got six buttons in it and a seventh button that actually does something called change button colors. If you press change button colors, what it does is it goes through and randomly assigns a new color to each of the buttons. There's an example of what that might look like there. To create our demonstration app, we go into the App Inventor Designer and we drag over a vertical layout here. This really isn't critical because it's simply a demonstration application. Inside that vertical arrangement, I've dragged buttons from over here on the left. Just simply drag them in and drop them inside the vertical arrangement. When it's selecting a button, I change the text to read button one, button two, button three, button four, five, and six, and so on. We then add a seventh button down here, and this is one that we're actually gonna add a tiny bit of code to do something with, and we change the text on that one to change button colors. We leave the button names over here on components as shown, the default values button one through button six. Next, we'll go over to the blocks code. Go up here to the beginning. And what we're gonna do in this is in order to change the colors of the buttons, we're going to use a list. And inside that list, we're going to place each of the buttons. Now what we're really doing is restoring a reference to the button. That may be kind of an unusual concept to get your mind around, but what it is is it's basically saying, this is how you can get a hold of button one or button two, three, four, five, and six. So what we've done is we first created a list of buttons as a global value. And for convenience, we've set our total buttons to six. I happen to like using variables to store constants. That sounds kind of an oxymoron. Um, what I do uh, is I actually put the variable name in all capital letters to let me know that that is a constant value rather than a variable. And I'm not intending to make changes to that during the execution of the code. If it's all in caps, I should know that I'm gonna keep it as a constant. Other programming languages actually have the notion of something called a constant or a constant variable uh, where the compiler or the other parts of the system will actually put constraints on it so that you can't change it. App Inventor doesn't have that, but we can simulate it by simply creating a variable and storing some values there. Just make sure we don't change those later on. Why do we do that? Well, rather than place six down here in various locations in our code, it's actually easier to read if we've actually got total buttons listed there instead of the constant value six. Plus, let's suppose later on the number of buttons becomes nine. If we've written a complicated program, we'd have to go through and change each of those values of nine to, or six to nine, and I can pretty much guarantee you that you're going to find yourself missing a few when you make that change. So by putting it all in one place in a variable, you'll simplify your maintenance and, and changes to your application in the future. Okay, that out of the way. Screen one initialize. This is where we set up our list. We use make a list to add button one, button two, three, four, five, and six. So we now have those six items in the list. Then we're going to call a function 
uh, or procedure rather called change button colors. Our change button colors is going to go from one to the total number of buttons, which is six right here, one to six. And we're going to change the background color of each button. How we do that is a little different. Now, you're probably used to doing something more like this up here. We could say, let's go up here, set button one to, uh, set button one dot background color two. But in this case, we actually have the values stored up here in the list for button one. So we can't actually write something like that. What we have to do instead, we'll leave that up there, is we first have to remove the button reference from the list. We're not actually deleting it from the list, we're just fetching it. So we're going to get this, get list of buttons, item or index number one. So we're gonna get the first button reference up here. And we're going to use this thing here called set button dot background color of component. And this is where we're gonna plug in that name that we've obtained from the list here. Now, we could have done something like this. You can see here it'll allow us to do that. We could say button one. But of course, then we can't go through our list of all six. So I'm gonna put that back, and drag this back in place. So what we're doing here is we're saying set the color or the background color of the button specified by this component we've stored in a list variable to some color. If you haven't seen this before, it's not real complicated. Make color is something you can use to create any kind of color you want. And we, we do that by assigning different values for what are the red, green, and blue components of each color. These values are normally set between zero and 255. So here we'd be saying, make the red color a random value between 20 and 240. Now I just said zero to 255, so why do I have 20 to 240? Well, the reason for that is, as we get down to these very low, low numbers, we're actually getting very close to the color of black. It makes it very hard to read the text on the buttons when we do that. Similarly, when we get up to high values, 250, 255, uh, we're actually setting it to the brightest setting that it can be. And when all of these values come out at the high end, it actually goes to white and it becomes very hard again to, to see what's going on on the screen. So by restricting the values here, the red values between 20 and 240, I find that gives a nice range of colors uh, without getting too dark and without getting too bright. So all we do now when we click on our button is we call change button colors. It'll go through the list from number one. It'll fetch the first item in the list, change that button's background color by to a random value right here. We'll go back to our for each loop and we'll go to button number two. We'll get the second button in the list here. Let's get number is now to value two. We'll keep going through this three, four, five, six until we finished. And now we've changed all the button colors. So there you have it. That's what you can do with this. You could make this to do other things too. You could take a collection of checkboxes, make them all checked or unchecked, for example. There's really unlimited things you can do with this. A written version of this tutorial and the source code is available at my website at appinventor.pevis.com. You can find a link to the direct tutorial in the description text for this video. Don't go away just yet. Be sure to click on subscribe as we'll be posting more videos here soon.